Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations at your service to tell you a little bit about a strange sounding scheme, strange sounding but really quite uh, substantial in terms of the extent to which it's used in amateur radio practice. That is known as the tuned feed line or a system of tuned feeders. You may wonder what exactly is meant by that expression. Tuned feeders or tuned feed line. Well, basically what it means is that the feed line and the antenna together are tuned to match the impedance of a radio transceiver. Now here's your transceiver right there. Generally speaking, that thing wants to see a 50 ohm purely resistive impedance, such as uh, you would get with a coaxial cable to have a perfect match. So you will connect your transceiver to your tuner with a length of 50 ohm coaxial cable, preferably a very short length of that cable. This tuner is also known as a transmatch or antenna tuner. And the best kind of tuner to use in this particular application that I have illustrated here is a tuner designed for a balanced load because this entire system the center fed wire and the feed line form a balanced load. That means that it's symmetrical. What happens on this side is identical to what happens on that side except in opposite phase and the a very well designed antenna tuner uh, made specifically for the purpose of tuning a balanced line is pretty hard to find. You will find some that have ballon coils inside of them in order to match an unbalanced to a balanced system but the best kind of tuner for this application is a true balanced antenna tuner and one of these uh, an excellent one is made by a company called Palstar P-A-L-S-T-A-R so you might want to Google on that particular word and look at their selection of antenna tuners in particular the one or ones designed for balanced loads now when you talk about a tuned feed line, what you really mean to say is that when you adjust this antenna tuner right here, this transmatch, you're tuning not only the antenna to get an impedance match, but the feed line as well. You want to match this whole thing here to 50 ohms, not just the antenna. In fact, your feed line is more likely to have an impedance of something like 450 ohms parallel wire so-called ladder line is commonly used for this application ladder line and that's exactly what it looks like two parallel wires with spacers polyethylene spacers at intervals of about six inches. They look like little sticks and prefabricated ladder line can be found it's about an the wires are spaced about an inch apart and the neat thing about that line is that it can withstand a very high standing wave ratio or SWR without suffering a whole lot of loss because it is an extremely low loss line to begin with. So what you will do then is string up a wire antenna as long as you can make it reasonably in a residential lot, uh, preferably a half a wavelength 
at the lowest operating frequency that you intend to use. And I just discovered today, after doing a little bit of measurement in my lot, that my lot measures 150 feet long by about 50 feet wide. Well, at 3.5 megahertz, a half wavelength antenna, dipole antenna, is approximately 133 feet long, give or take a little bit. Uh, it depends upon what part of the band you actually want to operate. And I'm a CW operator, so it's likely to be on the longish side, about 133 feet or so. So there's room for that kind of a thing. And that is a half wavelength, electrically, at 3.5 megahertz. That would be the lowest frequency that I would plan to use. And an antenna like this then can be tuned, including the feed line. The whole system can be tuned with a tuner like this, if it's a good one, to operate on not only this band, but just about all frequencies higher than this. Uh, there are certain very specific exceptions depending upon the overall length of the feed line and antenna combined. If you happen to get an extremely high impedance at this tuner, then you may have a little bit of difficulty. Or if it happens to be extremely low, you may run into a little bit of difficulty. So antenna tuners aren't perfect. They sometimes will encounter frequencies where they cannot handle the load. In a case like that, you can do one of two things. Choose a different band or a different frequency, or add or take away a little bit of your feed line. It's pretty hard to add any. Usually most people, uh, pardon me, it's pretty hard to take away any. Most people make their feed lines as short as they reasonably can to begin with, but you can add a little bit more if you really want to get on a particular frequency. So the meaning of tuned feeder is that not only is this antenna tuned, but the, the feed line itself is also tuned by that antenna tuner. Now that said, you can force feed an antenna like this sometimes to a frequency as low as about half the frequency where it is one half of a wavelength long. So theoretically, I might be able to put power into an antenna like this even on 160 meters. Then the constraint though would be, it, it's always a compromise if you go below that frequency where the antenna is a half wavelength. If you go below that frequency, it's always a compromise in terms of efficiency. And the other problem is that there's no way in the world I'm gonna get an antenna up really significantly high enough to function very efficiently on 160. In fact, it's going to be pretty hard to do it even on 80 meters without creating a huge eyesore for the neighborhood, and I'm not willing to do that. But that's the meaning of tuned feeders, and that is the most common system of tuned feeders. There are others. You can, you can tune a coaxial line. You can tune an antenna and feed system that is not symmetrical, not fed in the center. For example, a ZEP antenna incorporates a tuned feeder. Any system where you're tuning both the feed line and the antenna together with your transmatch constitutes a tuned feeder system. So that's what it means. A very, very well known, at least to older radio hams like me, and, w and uh, effective antenna system, and simple too, except for this tuner. I think the Palstar tuner is a little on the pricey side, but it's a doggone good tuner, and you may as well get the best. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, saying 73, and so long for now.